Well, despite the persistent inflation, along with uncertainty over the economy and interest rates, while well, the stock market keeps rocking, so what can we expect as we head into the summer? Let's get the read from our money gurus, Eddie Kabor and Melissa Armo. Melissa, let me start with you. Uh, so what camp are you in? Summer rally, summer doldrums? Well, it's all going to depend on the Fed. If the Fed continues to act like they're going to lower interest rates one or two more times this year, then of course the market's going to continue to rally. But Jamie Dimon came out recently and said, whoa, wait a second, they may actually raise rates again. And I think that spooked the market a little bit in the last few days. So we don't know what's going to happen with interest rates. I don't think even the Fed knows what's going to happen with interest rates. Inflation is still too high. And what's really funny is we get these economic reports out, Charles, and they're not good. Inflation is, well, prices are still going up. Mm -hmm. And everybody's happy because they're not going up as much as they used to. But they're still going up. And clearly, it is still bothersome to many people, especially people that are living paycheck to paycheck. It's very difficult for people when interest rates are very high and cost of everything is very high. You know, Annie, let me pick up on that because to, to, to Melissa's point, uh, you go back to when the Fed minutes came out. The same day NVIDIA was going to report their earnings. Everyone was giddy, excited, but the markets closed lower that day. Then they closed and closed lower the next day, despite NVIDIA's amazing earnings report, because this dark cloud of inflation is not going away. And you know what? Whether the Fed says they're going to cut or not, the markets are starting to believe there's not going to be any cuts. Look, I don't think you're going to get inflation to come anywhere near 2%. No one wants to admit this, but the only way you're going to get inflation anywhere near 2% is a recession because you need demand destruction. And so the Fed's going to have to make a choice between sticking with that 2% number and picking that or the economy because you're not going to accomplish both. I think we're going to have the tale of two stories this year. I think the market is going to rip higher into the summer months because they're going to believe the narrative and we'll get some soft inflation data. However, I think you're going to see a reacceleration of inflation towards the latter part of this year. And then we'll be talking about stagflation for 2025 because uh, these economic dump numbers are starting to support that as you start to calculate out over the next six to 12 months. All right. So stagflation is uh, de demand goes down, job unemployment goes up and inflation stays persistent. We've got some of that in areas like housing already, Melissa, where, you know, even though housing numbers have been soft, housing prices continue to go up which even further you know, makes people frustrated. But still, we've had, we could have had this conversation a month ago, two months ago, six months ago, and the market has still gone higher. How do you, how do you figure that this is a market that can find any narrative, rate cuts, no rate cut, and still find a way to keep moving higher? Well, remember, the market doesn't always make sense, Charles, with what's happening. If it's the emotions of the market and the anticipation that things are going to get better in the future, sometimes the market does move higher. And then if things don't turn out to be that way, like interest rates dropping, then the market could see a sell-off. But I think any sell-off we see in the market is going to be short-lived unless we would go into a recession. But to be honest with you, even if the Fed would drop rates one, two, three more times between now and the end of the year, rates are still so much higher now, so much higher now for people, for credit cards, mortgages, like you said, 30 year fix today, I think is around seven and a half percent. It's just too high. That isn't gonna make a real big of a difference for people as far as going out and buying a home or what they pay in credit cards. I will say one thing though, what could change between now and the next six months or 12 months there was a, this is an election year. <laughs> you know, Trump could win, Charles. He actually could win. And if Trump wins, I think then that the economy could improve and inflation could go down. And Trump could go back to the tax cuts that he had that helped businesses and helped everyday consumers. And then things could actually get better. Yeah. And that's really actually, I'm optimistic that that could have happened. You know, it's interesting. When he was elected, the NFIB immediately roared. The, the same day, he, back when he was elected the first time, that roared, the National Association of Home Builders roared, uh, and of course, if, if, I think, Eddie, there's a point that if the markets know that at least these tax rates will stay in place, that could be something that offers a buffer. But between now and that election time, do you tell people just to hold on despite the fact that it could get choppier? I think you need to own things that are tied to inflation. It's kind of our barbell approach that we're using where we own some commodities. Uh, we bought more commodities on the dip last week. And then look, I think you can still own growth names because at the end of the day, the 10-year has come down a lot. 
and that's bullish for equities. The Fed is dovish. Whether we believe them or not doesn't matter. The market believes it. And the money flows are still buying dips. So the setup here near term uh, is still bullish from an equity perspective, regardless of what's happening economically. So until those dynamics change, then I think the market's still going to go up. So we're still tactically bullish. Uh, we do own a lot of inflation assets because I think to me that's the easiest play because I think consensus, whether you're bullish or bearish, is inflation is going to persist. And so commodity prices should continue to be resilient. Uh, so, you know, these blow off tops can go much higher than many people anticipate before you hit headwinds. So don't fear 